deal from Phantom. I'm gonna do a live mix down today. So nothing is touched so far. So I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna mix it all down for you from scratch, starting out raw vocals. All right. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna try to give you the best sound possible because I don't have like super high quality speakers or anything. Cause I don't really, you know, use stuff like that, but whatever. All right, now here we go. You can't really see it a lot. I don't have a screen quarter. I don't know what to use for Mac. I kind of really get into it like that. But however, I will let you know everything and everywhere I'm going before I decide to, you know, do anything. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Okay, let me make sure it's not too loud on my cam. Okay. Now, I'm going to start out. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to check my balance. And basically how I do that is, usually there's something called buses, but I don't ever use it on here. I don't really know where it is on there. I don't use it on this program. I know on Acid Pro they have buses. On this one, I just pretty much eye it here and look where it's located. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to have this here, the beat, balanced as much as possible with my core take. Your core take is your main, you know, your, for people who don't know this, your core take is your main, main record, you know, your main one that's the loudest that you have stand out more than any and all of them. Okay, so this is my core. And what I'm about to do is I'm going to check the volumes and see how they level. Okay, and my bass is a little heavy on there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. I don't want to put bass reduction on it because it's going to take it off too much. So I'm going to turn it down to about a negative 1.8, and we're going to run that. And that's a lot better. Okay, now, this fourth one here, I'm clicking on is my overdub, my emphasize, okay? I'm gonna turn this down to at least a negative four. Now, usually, depending on how you're recording and how loud you have your recording device, you know, is it'll vary. But me, usually, I keep it between four and six. But actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it and take it down to my standard, what I usually do. I'm taking about five, three, okay? So I lowered it, the volume right here next to this down arrow, whichever model you're using, they're pretty much similar. This is GarageBand's tutorial for those who don't know or didn't read the title. See, it has a much cleaner sound to it and almost sounds more like one vocal. That's the sound you want to go for if you're just trying to do a standard mix down. Okay, now what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you to the equalizer because I want to balance that out a little bit. To get to your equalizer, for those who don't know, you're going to click whichever take it is you want to go to, and you're going to go to edit on your far right hand side here, okay? Be sure you're on real instrument, because if you go to master, you're going to affect the entire thing. So just be sure you're on real instrument and have highlighted what you want to do. And when you want to use one of these effects, you just click on the box here. You know, you can go down and pick whatever you want, depending on how in detail and in depth you get with your mixing, but we're going to keep it standard here. We're going to go take it to the uh, equalizer, all right? At the bottom right of your equalizer box, you have an analyzer. What this does is, it shows you your frequencies. You see these wavelengths? You want to keep these as centered as possible. You don't want any exceeding another unless you're doing a certain kind of effect. So we're going to see what I need to fix on mine. Let's start from the beginning. My treble, my highs are really low. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise it a little bit. Just about this much. You don't want to do this too much because this is a really powerful tool. And it will change your vocal sound completely if you alter it too much. So we're going to try one more time. Let's start from the beginning. And 
it makes it brighter. Okay, so it's a little bit brighter now. And what that means is when I say brighter is it gives it more of a more of a like natural sound to it. Because what happens is if your treble is too high, you'll get a hiss. And right now I'm going to show you an example of what happens when you have your treble too high and what it sounds like. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear them that well, but if you hear it, it's, it this is really heavy hisses like your S's. And your words that have really high hisses to them when your treble's too high. Okay? So if you have hisses, you need to come over here and you need to lower your treble. And again, users of GarageBand, they have an analyzer on here. So to tell you what's too high, you know, and what's not. If you're getting a muffled sound like this. See how it sounds like almost like an old school radio? If you're getting more of a muffled sound, you need to lower your bass because your bass is too high. You want to keep your bass at this line here because if not, you're going to get an old school radio effect, all right? So you want to keep this as balanced as possible. So bright means your trouble. Bright means how clear you have your sound. And dark usually is it's about like how, you know, if it's muffled or it's got really like that sound where you can't really hear the words too clear almost like a deep voice with no kind of emphasize no kind of what's that word i'm looking for no kind of uh enunciation basically that's what it sounds like almost okay now we're going to move on we're going to move on to the next step all right now that we've done this part i'm going to go here these are in betweens i broke this up this is also a chord all right i want to play well, I want to play ear play on them. I want to have one on one ear and I want to have one like another take on another ear. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it as far as soloing out this time. Okay, they say it is all right. So we have that, and then we're going to solo these both out so you can hear them. They say it is, they say that, they play it is, they play that. You get what I'm saying? Okay, now that you've heard it, what I'm going to do is. I want one in one ear and one in the other. This here is my core. I leave this in the center to keep my sound dominant with the center. These these here are the overs for this core. Okay? Now I'm gonna play these two together so I don't lose you. Wait. They say that. They play that. Okay, and that's what correlates with this takes. So what I'm gonna do is, and this one here correlates with this one, okay? And let's put it next to each other. This correlates with this one. Let's go ahead and solo it out so you can hear it. Oh bloody life made me this way. They say this, they play this. Okay, now we're gonna play them together. So just so you hear it. Wait, they say this, they say that, they play this, they play that. So that's right, that's all fact. Okay, so now you've heard it. Now what I'm about to do is I'm about to use my pan. Your pan is this. That's what this circle is. For those that don't know or never use it and just never wanted to mess with it, this is your pan. Okay. This here is my over that goes to this one. I want this on the right hand side. I'm only going to take it to about a 20 because I don't want to cause distortion. If you red line down here in your master, you're going to cause distortion and you can blow your speakers out. So you need to make sure this is never on red, okay? And if you want to turn it up, there's mastering programs. That's what uh, mastering programs are for if you want to raise up the track without causing distortion. Because if you're just trying to raise it and export it and you turn it all the way up, which I know a lot of people do, that's not the way you're supposed to turn them up. You're, you're messing up your, your core vocals. You need to use a mastering program to do so, all right? Now, I've done this first pan. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take it to this one, and I want this to pan 20% to the left. You're not gonna hear it because I only have one speaker. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I'm, yeah, I know. Don't don't comment. Shut up. Don't judge me. I got one speaker that works, <laughs> so you can't really hear the pan. However, when I play this verse at the end, you will be able to hear it. So pre, uh, you might want to wear headphones for it. If your speakers, matter of fact, matter of fact, forget it. Just wear healthy headphones in general because when you wear headphones, you can actually hear more than just speakers unless you have really good speakers okay now we're going to go ahead and play this together See, I ain't cold, 
And you know, it's pretty much already done. Mixing down is as simple as that. If you know how you're recording, I've been recording a long time, so I really don't have a lot to edit because the way I record. One of your biggest things that you need to work on when you're recording is you don't need to have... You, basically, if you're a loud, rowdy type recorder, you need to have your pop filter at least four to five inches you know, away from your uh, your mic, and you need to be standing back at least almost, give or take, a foot, about, about, about a foot, foot and a half, because if you're too close, you're going to cause distortion, or you can turn your mic down to where the feed is low, like negative 10, and then you can be at the regular stands, but you got to make sure your levels are suited to the kind of recorder you are. I'm a, my regular basic stuff is soft spoken, so my standard recording volumes when I when I have my set is usually just at leveled at zero, or I might have about positive one or two on the notches, but usually I don't go too much higher than that because I don't want to have it overbearing, not giving me a clear recording. When you record in, when you record here in a garage band, go to Mail Basic. It's always mail basic. If you would want to hear, if you want to hear yourself in the headphones, you come over here back to your real instrument, browse, okay? Click the browse tab. You have your input source. Depending on what kind of mic you're using, it'll be here. You click it. To hear yourself in the headphones, it's the monitor, okay? No feedback protection means it's not going to stop recording. And it's because basically you'll stop hearing yourself. Like it's not going to stop where you can hear yourself in the headphones. Because basically what happens is the feed from your headphones get picked up. It gets picked up on the mic. If it picks you up while you're recording on the mic, it'll turn off the feedback. And that's what that's what on means. No feedback protection means it's going to run regardless if it hears you in your headphones or not. It's going to keep running, and you'll still be able to hear yourself, and it won't cut it off. But usually for professional recordings. They have, you know, things and different deals with that. Not really going to get into that right now. But with the standard, now that we've gone over it, it's mixed down. Yo, look. What you want me to say? Cause I ain't got much to say. Now what you want from me? Cause I ain't trying to play I got a busy schedule And I ain't trying to stay See I ain't cold blooded Life made me this way They say this, they say that They play this, they play that So that's right, that's all facts Question No answer that And stop going around the point like a dumb tack So arrogant and spoil your dumb rats So broken and sour too far to contact Read between the lines just like a contract before the live book is closed, no sleep mode, just like a compact laptop. So off top, I'm hot off top, but too cool to waste time to stop. So as far as I'm concerned, you can wait until you rock. But whatever, get it all together. Because you were too unpredictable, just like Texas weather. Yo. If I give myself away to you. 